Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be talking about what medications can be prescribed in pregnancy. So the one very basic rule that we need to follow in pregnancy is that we should avoid giving any medications in first trimester because that is the period of organogenesis and therefore prescription of any kind of medication especially the antibiotics can result in teratogenic effects then if you are doubtful if you want to prescribe any antibiotic or analgesics or any other medication where you are doubtful you should always take a referral of the gynec of that particular patient in uh, pregnant patients drugs that we administer they cross the placenta very easily therefore exposing the fetus to the drugs before prescribing medication we need to know is the FDA category so what is FDA category A so FDA category A basically there are enough human controlled studies which suggest that prescribing this particular medication will not result in any kind of side effect or any kind of harmful effect to the fetus so there are no no antibiotics no analgesics basically the multivitamins and all the supplements which are there they come under category, fda category a then fda category b in fda category b basically there are no controlled human studies but animal studies have been conducted which suggest that there is no risk if we prescribe these antibiotics there is no fetal risk then FDA category C so basically there are animal studies which suggest that there can be adverse effects on the fetus when we prescribe such medications then FDA category D so FDA category D it suggests that there are known harmful risk or any uh, adequate studies have been conducted which suggest definitive risk but we can still give these medications to the patient when the benefits outweigh the risks in in the pregnant patient then FDA category X where there is risk it's there is proven risk in pregnant patients and they are completely contraindicated in pregnant patients now coming to uh, the antibiotics first so in uh, the most commonly used antibiotics that we prescribe basically amoxicillin penicillin is what we prescribe so penicillin group of drugs belong to FDA category B and cephalosporins and erythromycin and uh, metronidazole these all antibiotics belong to FDA category B and they are considered safe in pregnancy so amoxicillin which we are uh, prescribing can be given in pregnancy in all the trimesters but it should be preferably avoided in the first trimester erythromycin erythromycin succinate can be given but erythromycin esterate form should be avoided in pregnant patients because it can re result in hepatotoxicity or cholestatic hepatitis then metronidazole so metronidazole it needs to be avoided in first trimester so precautions need to be taken though it's a class uh, FDA class B category drug still some precautions need to be taken while administering this drug and especially it needs to be avoided in first trimester because there are certain study which suggest fetal toxicity or uh, presence of cleft palate when metronidazole was given so it should be preferably avoided in the first trimester and should be used in caution in pregnant patients then coming to antibiotics like uh, clarithromycin and ciprofloxacin so they belong to FDA category C hence they should be avoided their, their use should be avoided in pregnant patients and an alternative drug in uh, can be prescribed so ciplox is prescribed by a lot of dentists so that needs to be avoided in pregnant patients then FK category D that is tetracyclines and aminoglycosides that is gentamicin, neomycin and all fall in category 
D. So these drugs are to be avoided. They should not be prescribed in uh, pregnant patients. Only when it is absolutely necessary, they can be prescribed only when the gynec of the patient suggests. Then amoxicillin and clavulinic acid because we prescribe it, usually prescribe it in dentist, dentistry, most commonly prescribe it. So basically there are not, there's not enough data which suggests that amox clav can be used but whatever animal studies have been conducted on amclav they suggest that amoxicillin clavulinic acid has not resulted in very severe side effects and there are some human studies which also suggest that but it should be avoided uh, uh, until unless, unless it is absolutely necessary to prescribe this antibiotic and always the consultation or the gynec should be taken before prescribing AMCLAP. Metronidazole, whenever we are prescribing it in breastfeeding patients, we should take adequate it can it is safe it can be prescribed in breastfeeding patients but it is advised by american academy of pediatrics that the mother should stop breastfeeding the child for 12 to 24 hours after prescription of metronidazole because after that duration the levels of metronidazole in milk reduces now coming on to analgesics. So analgesics, we paracetamol is the safest analgesic which can be given. It, it belongs to FDA category B and it can be administered in pregnancy as well as lactation. But only care that needs to be taken is that we should not administer very high doses for a longer duration because it can then produce toxicity. It doesn't prolong the bleeding time uh, as aspirin. Then aspirin. So aspirin belongs to class C and it should not be given because it inhibits platelet aggregation. It can result in premature closure or constriction of ductus arteriosus. So it can delay the labor or it can delay the pregnancy of the patient. So it should be avoided. And uh, similarly, other NACIDs also need to be avoided. Uh, in pregnancy because they also inhib they are also prostaglandin inhibitor and therefore they can in inhibit the platelet aggregation which can result in increased bleeding and coming to local anesthetics so local anesthetics lidocaine that is that belongs to category b so that can be prescribed prilocaine can be given that also comes belongs to category b so lidocaine can be given in all the three trimesters and it can be combined with adrenaline one is to one lakh adrenaline which we usually use in dentistry it causes vasoconstriction so it also helps in reducing systemic toxicity of the drug when you administer local anesthetic or vasoconstrictors you should always aspirate whenever you are injecting a local anesthetic with vasoconstrictor to such patients then mepivacaine and bupivacaine and long acting la should be avoided so mepivacaine it is uh, you know the studies that have been conducted it's found out that it can result in fetal bradycardia then other drugs like enzyolytics or sedatives when we talk about so benzodiazepines and barbiturates they belong to category d so they need to be avoided in any trimester they should not be administered then antifungals we can give nystatin or clotrimazole, uh, clotrimazole they belong to category b and they both can be prescribed then ketoconazole cannot be prescribed then steroids so topical steroids can be given but otherwise prednisolone and all need to be avoided systemic administration of steroids should be avoided because it can result in gestational diabetes hypertension then uh, chlorhexidine or oral rinse and xylitol it can be prescribed in pregnant patients especially in the third trimester because it can reduce the bacterial load and prevent or reduce the the vertical transmission of bacteria from the mother to the child so to sum up you can prescribe amoxicillin you can prescribe cephalosporins and if the patient is allergic to both amoxicillin and cephalosporins then you can prescribe erythromycin succinate 
salt can be given then metronidazole can be prescribed but it needs to be prescribed with precaution and uh, it should be avoided in the first trimester and you should always ask the gynec before uh, prescribing if it's absolutely necessary to prescribe this antibiotic then for analgesics, you can prescribe uh, paracetamol in all the three trimesters of the patient, but should prevent overdosage of the drug. Then all uh, you can prescribe in uh, lidocaine with adrenaline in all the three trimesters, but you should uh, take precaution that you don't you aspirate before injecting uh, LA in such patients. Then prilocaine can also be given. Bupivacaine and mepivacaine should be avoided, and then. Uh, we can prescribe nystatin and clotrimazole as antifungals. Topical steroids may be prescribed. Systemic steroids should be avoided. Then uh, we can give chlorhexidine and xylitol. Mouth rinse can be given, but that should be also given in last month of uh, pregnancy. So that brings us to the end of the video. So if you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. If I have missed something, if you want to ask, you can leave a message in the comment section below. And uh, in the subsequent class, I will be talking about dental management of pregnant patients, what precautions need to be taken when we are actually managing the dental uh, pregnant patients in dental chairs. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.